This video tutorial is brought to you by TipSquirrel at www.tipsquirrel.com. For all the best Photoshop and Lightroom goodness, follow at TipSquirrel on Twitter or go to Facebook.com slash TipSquirrel. Hello everybody, Mike Hoffman here, and today we're going to be talking about live shapes in Photoshop CC. Since the introduction of Photoshop CS6, we've seen some great improvements in the handling of shapes within Photoshop. And with Photoshop CC's latest update, we have some new features that are worth taking a look at. In fact, we'll take a step back and do a quick overview of the shape features in Photoshop now because they have changed since the earlier versions. We'll start by selecting one of the shapes here in the toolbar. And in this case, we'll select the Ellipse tool. And we'll make sure that this dropdown is set to create shapes and this will create a shape layer. Now starting with Photoshop CS6, we had the ability to add a fill and a stroke to our shapes. Previously, shapes were nothing more than vector paths set on top of a solid color layer. But now we have true fills and strokes. So let's go ahead and add a fill and a stroke before we draw this shape. And in fact, we'll make the stroke a little bit larger just so it's visible. And then we'll go ahead and drag out a shape here on the canvas. And here's the shape. Now one thing to notice right away, as soon as we created the shape, the properties panel opened up and you can see that it's set to show the live shape properties. We have some of the features that are available here in the toolbar, but we have some more as well. And we'll see how to use some of these. Right away, we can drag on the width and the height controls to change the size of our ellipse. Notice that they're linked together. If we unlink those, we can change the width and height independently. But we can also drag on X and Y to reposition. And of course, we can change the fill and stroke from within the panel here. And we can change the stroke size as well, maybe make it a little bit thicker. In fact, we can even change the stroke from a solid line to a dashed line right here in the live shape properties. We'll change that back to solid. But now here's where it starts to get interesting. Let's add another shape. We'll just come out here and drag on the canvas to create a second shape. At this point, we've created a second ellipse. And notice here in the layers panel, we have another ellipse layer. But I'm going to press Control Z or Command Z on a Mac and undo that. And what I'm going to do is come up here to the toolbar and I'm going to change the path operations which by default is set to new layer and I'm going to change it to combine shapes then I'm going to go ahead and drag out another ellipse just like last time notice how the two shapes are now combined and we only have a single layer here in the layers panel in fact I'm going to grab the path selection tool the black arrow and with this tool, I can actually move these paths around independently of each other and notice how they stay joined together. The stroke is around the outside perimeter, but it doesn't stop there. We can revisit this icon here in the toolbar and change the path operations on the fly. Right now, it's set to combine shapes, but we can set to subtract from shape. Now this gives us a really weird result, but we can change that by adjusting the stacking order of the paths. Simply click this and we can bring the shape to front, move it to the back, and so forth. So if we're building up stacks of shapes, we can rearrange them and this will change the results. Now let's go ahead and try another one. Let's try intersection. And here we get a shape created just by the intersection of these two paths. And finally we can do an exclude, which will give us everything but the intersection. These are all live properties and they can all be adjusted on the fly. Let's go ahead and select all these paths and move them down here to the side and we'll start a new one. And this time I'm going to choose the rectangle tool. I'm going to make sure that I'm set to new layer because I do want to start a new layer and I'll leave the fill and stroke as they are. I'll drag out my rectangle here on the canvas, and there it is. Now we have the same types of controls that we saw before. We can adjust the width, 
we can adjust the height and we can lock them together so that they scale uniformly. We can also move our shape around by dragging the X and Y values. But here's a new feature in Photoshop CC and these are rounded corners. I'm going to make sure that this link is selected and then I'm going to simply click and drag to change the value here. When I do, notice that all four corners of the rectangle are now rounded. And this is a live effect. So we can change it and we can adjust it until we get the size of the rounded rectangle that we want. Now we can deselect this chain link and adjust them independently. So we can take just this corner and change the value. And we can change just this corner and create some nice effects. And these are all live effects and they're all adjustable in the future. Now one final thing to note, if we go back to our path selection tool and choose the direct selection tool, which is the white arrow, we can now click and adjust any point on the path. When we do, we get a warning. The live shape will be turned into a regular path. And if we choose to continue, we now have an ordinary shape path. All the live features have disappeared. We still have control over the fill and stroke, but we no longer have the live shape properties. So that's a quick overview of some of the new live shape features within Photoshop CC. If you haven't played with the new shape features in Photoshop CC, I'd encourage you to get in there and experiment. While Photoshop is still not the equivalent of Illustrator when it comes to working with vectors, the features keep getting better and better. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of Photoshop, Lightroom, and photography tips and tricks and related information there. You can follow me on Twitter at mhoffman2001, and you can find me on Google Plus by simply going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.